Hello and welcome to the Evangelist Nick Garrett channel, Truth First Christianity in a Post-Christian Country, where we take the objective and factual about the faith and separate it from the subjective and traditional for the benefit of our faith walks. If you're new to the channel, welcome. We appreciate all new subscribers. Make sure your notification bell is shaded all the way in. Let's get started. Today we're talking about something a little creepy, crawly, and slithery. Snake handling in Christian worship. So most people think to dance around with venomous snakes is nuts to begin with. Yet, to claim it as part of God's will and an ordained biblical part of worship is quite baffling. Most serpent handling, as it is better known, is isolated to the United States, most specifically the Appalachian Mountains that go north to south, inland from the U.S. East Coast. Another feature of the practice is that it takes place in very rural areas of the mountain ranges. The practice itself goes by several denominational factors. It's an offshoot of Charismatic and Pentecostalism, which claims that the Holy Spirit can be called upon to indwell and cause euphoria, dancing, speaking in tongues, and more. The main doctrinal tenet is called the Holiness Movement, which ironically comes from inside the 19th century Methodist Church, but also has kinship in the Quaker and Anabaptist movements. The Holiness Movement believes there is a second act of God's grace that can eliminate sin from the life of a believer for good. Several definitive works on snake handling dispute its origin. Tradition states that George Went Hensley, lived from about 1880 to 1955, began the snake movement in Appalachia. Two historians disagree on this point. Hood and Williamson give him credit, but the writer Kimbrough says there's no evidence for this. That being said, Hensley is credited for exporting his unique, venomous, snake-ridden warship across the southern United States. His name likely sticks because the media is fascinated by such practices, and those ministers who die from snake bites tend to get the most attention. Many would be surprised to learn that the snake handling aspect of worship began inside the Church of God branch of Methodists with people like Hensley. Eventually they broke off of Methodism and did their own thing over religious disputes centering around sanctification. Hensley began using snakes for what is believed to be the first time at a church he formed in Birchwood, Tennessee called Dolly Pond Church of God in 1910. He eventually left his church to promote his strange snake handling practice through the South. He asserted that if the Holy Spirit was truly with someone, they should be able to handle rattlesnakes and any number of venomous serpents. That's not it though. They should also be able to drink poison and suffer no harm. As Hensley traveled, snake handling became a test of faith. Far from people finding his practice to be nuts, it caught on all through Appalachia, Tennessee, Kentucky, Virginia, Ohio, Indiana, and the Carolinas. As is the case with most denominations that center around a charismatic figure instead of sound objective belief, Hensley turned out to be a drunk who had been divorced three times and married a fourth. His supporters naturally called these things slanderous lies and fabrications. Today, about 40 churches across Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, Kentucky, North and South Carolina, Tennessee, and West Virginia practice snake handling. By 2004, four churches had even popped up in Canada. Let's go over a few of their doctrines. Practitioners believe serpent handling is quoted in the Gospel of Mark and the Gospel of Luke to support the practice. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. That's from Mark 16, 
verses 17 and 18. Here's another. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. There's another passage from the book of Acts which supports snake handler's beliefs. In this case, Paul was bitten by a venomous viper, but suffered no harm. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita, and the barbarous people showed no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us, every one, because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened to his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. How be it they looked when he should have been swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said, that he was a god. Worshippers take additional directives of these passages literally and are still encouraged to lay hands on the sick, speak in tongues, provide testimony of miracles, and occasionally consume poison such as strychnine. Snake handlers don't worship snakes, no, no. Instead, use the snakes to show non-Christians that God protects them from harm. In church services, when they feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit come upon them, these Christians reach into boxes, pick up venomous snakes, and hold them as they pray, sing, and dance. Gathering mainly in homes and converted buildings, snake handlers generally adhere to strict dress codes such as uncut hair, ankle-length dresses, no cosmetics for women, and short hair and long sleeve shirts for men. Most preach against the use of tobacco and alcohol. Today's snake handlers believe in a strict and literal interpretation of the Bible, and most Church of God churches are actually non-denominational. They believe that denominations are human-made and carry the mark of the beast. Worshippers attend services several nights a week, where if the Holy Spirit intervenes, services can last up to five hours. The minimum is usually 90 minutes. Those who die from snake bites are never criticized for lack of faith or not having the Holy Spirit. It is believed that it was simply the deceased's time to die. From an anthropological perspective, one can't help but make the connection between the rural mountains, the native presence of rattlesnakes, and such a strange practice. Interestingly, many states outlawed the practice when it first emerged. However, some churches won their cases to continue to practice on First Amendment freedom of religion grounds. In Georgia, the practice was outlawed after a seven-year-old was killed. A fascinating case took place in the U.S. courts when a husband was charged with attempted murder after one of the warship snakes bit his wife. This was covered in a fascinating book by a journalist named Dennis Covington. In modern decades, the law is cracking down on the practice. In 2008, 10 people were arrested and 125 snakes confiscated in a sting by local law enforcement called Once Bitten, Twice Shy. An additional 74 snakes were taken from the home of the pastor as part of the sting. The man arrested, Pastor Jamie Coots, continued to fight for his constitutional rights to practice his unique form of Christianity. In 2013, he was once again arrested with three rattlesnakes and a copperhead crossing state lines. Soon after writing an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal stating his case, he was bitten by a rattlesnake and died in 2014. One writer, Ralph Hood, was quoted as saying, quote, the handling of venomous snakes has significant risks. If you go to any serpent handling church, you'll see people with atrophied hands, missing fingers. All the serpent handling families have suffered such things. Jamie Coots, a pastor who subsequently died from a snake bite, said, quote, handlers get bitten all the time. 
and every few years someone dies. In 2003, there were over 100 documented deaths, around 120 in the year 2005. 2013, there were about 100. 2015, about 91. That's only to name a few. In the video description, friends, I will list for you a list of all the snake deaths going back to 1922. Thank you so much for listening to this interesting story about a very rare and hard to understand denomination of Christianity. Please head on over to Amazon.com slash author slash Nicholas Garrett to purchase my books. You can also visit me on BitChute, Twitter, and Facebook at Evangelist Nick G. Please share the video, watch it, like, comment, get a discussion going. The more active you are with the videos, the more it benefits all of us. God bless you, friends, and may your work today bear fruit. See you next time.